Ati Allah Ati Rasulullah Amri Minkum from the hadith that we mentioned earlier, who knows himself will know his Lord. What we described last week of an analogy is Lord is a position of a power. So for some people to visualize because we're visual creation is the chair. So what Prophet is describing is if you know yourself you'll know who sits on your chair. So that, that was the talk from last week that if we focus on that then it answers many questions and gives us a, an easy way to do our accounting. So who knows himself will know who's sitting on the chair. So at the end of the night I got angry at work. I got angry here, I got angry there, I talked sharp with this person, I was aggressive with this, I do, 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 do. And then right next to it you put down who is sitting on the chair. Because then that simplifies that hadith and Prophet Wasallam's infinite barakah and blessing make it easier for these ashiqeen. So that they understand that before we can get to Rabbiul A'la that for someone to think they're submitting to Allah first they have to realize, uh, no they have to go from the levels of the nafs that their nafs amara is actually submitting to shaitan first. So maybe 80 to 90, 99% of the chair is shaitan sitting there. You say, no, no shaykh I'm justified to be angry. Most likely no, that's just your shaitan sitting on the chair justifying that he's just sitting on the chair because shaitan is very clever. So shaitan is not going to sit on the chair and agree that, no I don't need to be sitting here. He says, I've been here for hundreds of thousands of years. So whatever you tell me I'm going to tell you, no I, I have a nice answer for it. So even shaitan will justify why he's sitting on the chair. Then if you rise a little bit above the shaitanic realm it's going to be the nafs sitting on the chair and that the shaitan allows because he becomes partners and they take share of who's going to sit for how long. So only through the practices, meditation, the zikrs, their salah, the wudu, everything that Prophet brought is a weapon to make that chair very hot. And now we come into the great reset. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below. The programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Coming in the next few weeks, two weeks. Less than two weeks is Ramadan. They talk about a reset, reset, reset. People talk about being baptized and oh they got baptized. The great reset and, and barakah and blessing Allah gives in Islam is Ramadan because it takes you from whatever garbage you put upon yourself for 12 months. You come now to because each is 12 months away from the last Ramadan. As soon as we're coming into this Ramadan it's going to be the great reset in which Allah said, make intention for fasting. You're sick, you don't matter, make intention to fast. Don't let anything to stop that unless you're extremely ill and even then make intention to fast and take your medicine and then take some water and do whatever you can to keep whatever part of Ramadan you can because it's an immense reset in which the chair that seat of that hadith is going to become so heated shaitan won't sit there. And that's when they describe shaitan is chained in Ramadan. Not all shaitans, 
your shaitan, my shaitan, the, ch- the shaitan of an individual, otherwise other people's shaitans are not chained because it's Ramadan, they come after you because it's Ramadan. And that's when the person when they begin to fast they can understand their nafs and they understand the chair very well. That's a great opportunity for fundraising and charities and all of the Islamic issues because the chair is then occupied by the rightful owner, the soul. And that's why people become very giving, very charitable, filled with worship, filled with compassion. It's not a coincidence, it's an it's a immense reality. So reflection in Ramadan is very important. Not only you fast with your mouth but you have to fast with all five senses. So then when we understand we're sitting on the chair is an opportunity on how I can fast while I'm sitting on this chair with my eyes. Not look at things that are not appropriate, at least clean my eyes, wash my eyes, fast with my ears so that I'm not hearing bad and hearing gossip and hearing bad words and and, and cursing words and all these bad uh, energies that are coming through. So at every level we're trying to open up the reality of of fasting. That's the great reset that Ramadan, Ramadan offers to the nation and as a result of 12 months of shaitan sitting on the chair with the nafs, it becomes purified as soon as you exit Ramadan as if you're newborn. This is Allah's immense mercy, immense mercy. No other nation has that because they don't keep a Ramadan, they don't keep their Lent, they don't keep the 30 days of fasting and Allah would have washed and reset them. As a result can you imagine they go year after year after year with the filthy contamination and shaitan is so seated and like iron he's locked himself into these chairs. And you, you can see that he's so powerful on these people that the most demonic images they think are nice. So you, you must have like big shaitan on your chair to think like that. You know they have these elephants with hands and, and people with 20 hands and uh, what would you think this awful looking thing looks like? But when shaitan is on your chair it looks uh, I guess appropriate for some people. And the actions and all the things that you see in the world now, this is not from a, a soul sitting on a chair. These people act and they talk in a way that you know that their shaitan is on their chair. Ya hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi aliyu nabeem, inshaAllah. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, if we are all from the light of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu does that mean that his holy soul was the soul to make the covenant on behalf of us all? His holy soul was the what? His holy soul was the soul to make the covenant on behalf of us all. Is the soul that Allah brought into existence and is the covenant of Allah and every every soul is, is made from that light of Muhammadun Rasulullah Abu Arwa, the father of souls. So means if that's the source of light that God is going to create from then everything comes from that light. The true covenant is within that light. The Ark of the Covenant was an imitation. We said before that Nabi Musa and each of the Prophets and their reality are imitations of a Muhammadan reality. So the Muhammadan haqqaiq is the, is the covenant of Allah is the Ahad and the heart of uh, those whom believe in Muhammad and Rasulullah then you have to get the Lataif al-Qalb book and realize that the heart is the Ark of the Covenant, the real Ark of the Covenant. Even if they uncover the clay box and whatever they think is in that covenant, it's not, it's, it's less important than the real Ark of the Covenant which is the heart of the believer that has Muhammadun Rasulullah within it because that's the real. The other one was imitated for the other nations. But when the true authority comes which is Muhammadun Rasulullah then the one that has that love in their heart 
is now capable of opening the covenant of Allah and that becomes the lataif of qalb when you understand the angels that are holding the heart and all the realities that are going to be emitting from that heart. But its key is mifta rahmah, is Muhammadun Rasulullah So that's why you get lataif al qalb because it's all about the Ark of the Covenant. So people are digging under buildings to get this box with clay tablets from Allah speaking to Sayyidina Musa And the thing is so powerful, they have such a faith that they think if they get it they'll conquer the earth. No, they're going to conquer the earth because Allah giving them jinn powers that had nothing to do with that. And that's just the power of deceit and deception that the dajjal will have and is authorized by Allah to have. But the true power, more powerful than that is the one who opens their heart and opens the true covenant of Allah and that's with the understanding of lataif al-qalb because those lataif are describing the real covenant of Allah which is all upon the heart of the believer. They have to understand the angels, the holy companions, the family of Prophet and that all the Prophets of Allah and how they open that heart and this is a key into opening God's heart upon the… on the heart of the believer, God's home and kingdom upon the heart of the believer. Those then whom Allah opens His kingdom upon their heart then there's no comparison with the kingdom of Allah and the kingdom of shaitan. Shaitan's power exists by permission of Allah So when the kingdom of Allah opens upon the servant then that's a power in which he has more power than the shaitan Then the shaitan taking from his permission, is that Allah, is that a Rasul, is that a mu'mineen. So it has immense realities, immense realities inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa the secret that is inside every insan's soul unique to themselves and what exact point must a salik reach where he can reach his secret? This has to be from the meditation book <clears throat> that your, your secret is, is in the shaykh. So this is still we're not clear on what we're trying to reach. You're not reaching a point. You're, you're reaching to be nothing. So you're not reaching like, I'm going to uncover something about myself and therefore I'm going to have all these realities. But it's actually the reverse in which you're going to connect with the shaykh and be deflated and negated. And as a result of being nothing, 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 what happens to the servant? They become the light of the shaykh which then becomes the light of their shaykh all the way up to the light of Muhammadun Rasulullah specific to that individual that their Muhammadan light will look into their heart at that time when they reach their annihilation and their nothingness. What happens in your nothingness? So as we described so many times in other talks, it's in the meditation book. As much as you're something in this dunya you didn't reach to the reality of your akhirah. So then they're going to deflate the person, collapse them, collapse them, collapse them only by the power of muraqabah in which so much heat comes to them, so much energy comes to them, it completely burns their matter into a liquid state. Otherwise how else are you going to bring matter down except by heat? But if this comes down then your reality and your soul reality begins to manifest. That can never manifest until the physicality is melted. So it's not the physicality going and seeking and reading a book and reading this O rod and doing this O rod and then opening something because now that physicality is even stronger thinking it knows something. So the physicality in the path is actually to be nothing, to be strong in the connection with the shaykh to annihilate yourself into nothingness, nothingness burning in that light and that heat like the moth to the flame. So you'll find it in all the poetry and all the nat. Abhida Parvan, I think we, we… it's not her but she's reading from those nat. The charaq, what the one we have we recite, it gives the whole spiritual path in one nat. 
that come and, and drink from their, their nectar, the nectar of these realities that the shaykhs are teaching. Then they say, why you want to drink from it? Why don't you be from it? Means don't just come look at us, join and be a student in the path. And then once you understood that you have to be a student, you're like a moth now and you're enticed by this Divinely flame. But what does the moth realize? It's not going to find a secret on how to be a dragon and a butterfly. The moth realizes its only opening is to enter that fire and burn. So that's not a path many people will do, they won't take and move into the flame. They say, no make this moth appear like a dragon for people, make them to be impressed by me. Uh, or the another analogy is the seed, everybody likes to be a talking seed. But it's not about being a seed, it's about being a seed planted into a soil of nothing. As the soil is, is, is eating up the seed, soon a plant will appear. That plant is something completely different than the seed. But the seed can't say, okay well give me my secret, how am I going to be able to talk and understand all these realities? No, the secret is actually the seed has to be willing to enter the soil and be annihilated and the soil will begin to sort of take apart, decompose the seed into nothingness and with their zikr, the meditation, all the spiritual energy. Then in the state of nothingness Allah will bring something new and it won't look anything like that seed. And that's the importance, so it's, it's not about, uh, give me an aura to read, which books can I read, which... you're reading the books to understand the curriculum of the shaykh and this specific path of how to meditate, contemplate, to be nothing. If I'm nothing then it's in the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah, then it's opening the heart of Muhammadun Rasulullah, it's opening the heart of Holy Qur'an, so all of them. And all the qudra and the angelic energies, all of this is based on to achieve that reality, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Ya Sayyidi, my understanding is that you mentioned that scientists have created a light and frequency to shatter cancer. Does that mean with the zikr? we can shatter our sickness? Well that means that they're understanding now light and energy, they're going back to the basics. They went to, towards medicine and uh, fixing things externally, looking for solutions for uh, external uh, visuals of what something is wrong with somebody. But now they're understanding that the most powerful weapon is sound. And if you understand the frequency of, uh, of things and you play the frequency back upon that object, you can shatter it. So that then opens for a believer to understand, oh well then that's why du'a is so powerful. Well because yes, their du'a has a frequency, if Allah gives a permission for that du'a to approach the person means the frequency can annihilate everything wrong. As a result it can also set in a positive frequency to reset and recalibrate everything that went wrong or is, is wrong within somebody. So the zikrs, the majlis, the association of chanting, the meditations, the connection because the connection is the same thing like the du'a. As soon as you connect you're asking for the shaykh's presence, that presence comes with a lot of frequency. Many people become heated and energized immediately because their appearance is there. They don't have to be physically seen, that energy is not within the, the physical spectrum of seeing. So their energy can be very present and you don't need to see them. So like between the TV remote, a child and a television, every time you change a channel the child didn't see a light that hit the TV and changed the channel, doesn't understand how you're changing the channel by pressing this button and all the channels are changing. So the presence of the shaykh is not seen, as soon as you do the muraqabah and the meditation, their light is coming from a spectrum that's not visible to people. And as a result of that spectrum being present with you, they begin to heat 
the object. And uh, yeah, there are very, a lot of technologies now can be understood. The convection oven, the pan has a certain material, the burning convection countertop has a heat. When you touch it, it feels cold but when the pan touches the thing immediately can fry and bring something into an immediate heat. Well, these are all spiritual understandings, how somebody could be heated up and the person next to them feels nothing and the shaykh can be very present with somebody and the other person has no training, feels nothing. So it's like a convection oven, as soon as you're prepared, you built yourself, as soon as the presence of the shaykh you immediately heat up and things come boiling. But that is continuous training and training and, and negating oneself to be nothing, to be nothing, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Wa alaykum as uh, Three part question, mm. uh, how, do we, how do we get back the chair of honour when we catch the nafs sitting at a determinate moment and what is the role of the unwanted inhabitants that we may have picked up from pagan practices before tariqah in the chair dynamic? And Sayyidi, if a bad jinn has been hanging with us for a long time, can he sit on the chair and affect our health, physical, mental, emotional? Sure. As soon as you had a bad jinn, he's, he's occupying that chair. Otherwise, why would he want to be with you? He doesn't occupy you because of your attractiveness. He's there to sit on the chair because for them they, they don't have a visible chair. Right, because uh, the human is a, is a physicality and they want to drive that physicality like a car. So anybody dealing with the spirits and, and these different uh, entities, if they come in contact with somebody and attach themselves to that person means that they're on the seat, making them insane and schizophrenic and uh, or bipolar, every type of psychological a uh, description can be described by one of those beings, just imagine it has a personality and it entered into the person and has free reign on the chair, it sits in there and speaks Urdu. It sits on there and begins to recite Qur'an but you can't recite Qur'an. It sits on there and begin to tell you all sorts of things and make you act all sorts of different personalities. So yeah that's very much you know Islamic spirituality to understand that. Western psychology doesn't understand any of these things, doesn't believe in any of these things so they just say, oh just do this. But Islamic spirituality explains a lot of these practices, a lot of these realities. So it's very much important to do the practice again like the meditation book, make your connection, do your awrad, do your zikrs and that's everything. You have to get the energy book, you have to get the meditation book, you have to do those practices, not just sort of ask the questions that, how do we do, how do we do, it's the same thing, always the same thing, just go back to the energy book. You have to be studying the energy, you have to be doing the practices, you have to be doing the meditation and making your madad, making your awrads and your recitations because those are the weapons that heat up the chair so that shaitan has to jump off. The nafs has to jump off and that only the soul can sit on that reality, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah uh, What about the people that get very angry and fight with you, especially in Ramadan, almost like they are not normal? How do we avoid them and deal with them? Yeah, you just try to keep uh, away from people. Ramadan is a month in which to seclude oneself because uh, the shaitan of an individual is, is tied with their fasting but because so much light is coming on them, the other shaitans are very angry. So it's not a time to be out, it's not a time to be you know socializing, it's not a time to be going here and there. 
So it's best to keep oneself secluded, to do your work with little as possible uh, interaction with people and it's a time for seclusion and, and uh, to seclude oneself and reverse your schedules if you can so that you know you're, 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 you're busy at night and doing your fasting and, and reading and, and meditating and relaxing in the day so that you know you can achieve what you need to achieve. But uh, definitely the light will agitate everyone else and everyone other than a fasting person because their devils are very angry by that light and by that energy, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah uh, What types of actions and other holy nights are given a chance for us to change what is written for us in Ummul Kitab? To change what's written? All the actions uh, that uh, from Laylatul Nisf al-Shabban is different, it's what Allah is going to write for that year. That's why that night is important to do the practices and what Allah is going to write into the book. Then everything else is of an importance because the salawats, the zikr, the meditation, the tafakkur, the night of power, all, all of the celebrations that Prophet brought for us are immense ni'mat, are immense blessings, a way in which to expediate the sins, take away the sins and instead replace them with God's uh, grace and majesty. That when we ask for forgiveness means that that sin taken away then is filled with God's grace and the, enough of that grace then changes the destiny of people. So that's everything in Islam, it's not just one thing. So you give sadaqah on a daily basis, you give zakat uh, every year and throughout the month, you're continuously doing those things that would lessen punishment. So daily sadaqah, when people give a daily sadaqah it lessens a punishment. If a, a truck was coming for you and written that this person would be hit by a truck Prophet described what is the only way to take that away was sadaqah. So it means everything was given to us as a means in which to expedite and take down anything that was coming towards us either by our own cause or what was written for us. So people do many sort of objectionable things, things that are not correct and many difficulties may be coming towards them. So by charity and good deeds and, and khidmat and service, prayers and zikr and salawats, all of them lessen sins, lessen punishment, lessen God's anger and in its place give us God's grace. So it's not one thing, not two things but it's everything that Prophet brought for us. Sadaq is a smile, so smiling, having good character, good to people, not letting people feel bad or that they're dirty or they're, they're inferior, being good character, good ambassadors of that reality, that being generous, being uh, compassionate, all of these then bring God's grace and rahmah and, and Allah's happy ridha and satisfaction upon the servant. So our whole lives are about how to, to make God happy with us and how to make or how to achieve the, the, the gaze and the vision of the Prophet upon our souls. Because he looks to us that we're following his rules and Allah then dresses us from grace and mercy. So everything, everything that there was given, everything that's taught that's why you get the meditation, get the energy book and understand all of these practices, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Alhamdulillah, reading the books makes me feel like you are inside me Sayyidi, a love that I've never witnessed before. Thank you. Allah bless you and inshaAllah give you more and more inspiration, inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Can angels appear in physical form and do zikr with us? Please forgive my ignorance. Yeah. 
Allah, Allah is free to do whatever He wants but that's not likely. Their frequency is, is a very strong frequency, not a visible frequency and that's most likely a jinn. So the angels they, they don't intervene and they don't interfere. They are more fearful than the jinn world. The jinn world they don't care about anything if, if they want. So imagine now the human, you go to the masjid, anyone in the masjid by virtue of just being in a masjid, anyone in the masjid can bother you. You can't say, oh I was in a masjid, I don't know how that happened. No, no, anyone in the masjid will bother you, come up, tell you and agitate you, may try to hustle you, steal from you, con you, every kind of uh, possible imagination you have it will happen in a masjid. It even happens in Masjid Nabawi in Medina Tamunah, what happens right in front of the Kaaba. The other I got an accident, I have no money for my bus to go home, please give me 500 riyal. You say, oh how could it happen? No, that's their business, that's what they do there. Shaitan was in paradise fooling Sayyidina Adam So why you are not going to go somewhere that they can fool you? So when you understand that say, yeah it happened everywhere these types of things. So you have to just be aware. Now angels, why would they begin to manifest? When they play a background role and they don't interfere unless it's specific guidance that has to come and give them isharat and, and give them a, a specific guidance. It can come by khatir in which they connect their hearts and they visualize. For them to manifest physically highly unlikely, can't say never because that's in Allah's hands. What Allah wants to do with His servant Allah does. Likelihood is that these are jinn just playing with people and and, and you know making mischief because if they do that enough then people will say, oh I don't need a guide, I have an angel coming. And that may be a way in which to take somebody away from the shaykh. So we've, we've described many times before that people came and said, oh no I'm being inspired by uh, Imam Ali. And I said, no you're not being inspired by Imam Ali because Imam Ali wouldn't take you away from training with us, you're being inspired by shaitan. And the person went and harmed themselves because that's not how it works, right? So Imam Ali wouldn't come to somebody and say, leave guidance and tarbiyah which is the way of Prophet and come sit with me alone. No, you have to be with the, a, a physical shaykh and you have to have a physical connection. So spirituality without a physical connection is almost certainly a calamity. Because you don't know who you're seeing and you're not really clear on what you're seeing and that's uh, when hallucination and delusion and all sorts of dangerous manifestations can happen. That's why it's, it's wajibu taqlid in Ahlul Sunnah it's wajib to taqlid, to follow. So you have to follow a living shaykh, you know somebody that's physical, physical world he's physically there, I can email and, and get an answer physically. Now if he can meet me spiritually in the spiritual realm then even better. So then he's a spiritual guide also. But to leave the sharia and say, now I'm just following a spiritual inspiration that could be all over the place and not allowed, not, not highly disliked, inshaAllah. Mm, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum Salaam wa uh, Is it then recommended to call upon the names of angels for madad? Huh? Why would it be recommended to call upon the names of angels for madad? You have to connect with the shaykh. What are you going to do by calling upon the names of angels? You can call any name you want but did, does that mean that you don't make your madad? And then what I just described for the whole 10 minutes is that your connection has to be with the shaykh and that you have to make sure that your madad is really strong with the shaykh before you start to hallucinate that I'm connecting with Sayyidina Jibra'is, Sayyidina Miqa'is, Sayyidina Isra'is and Isra'i. You can call for their barakah of the du'a by mentioning the names of pious people, Allah send Tanzil Rahmah. But to make madad in the sense I'm going to sit and ask for Sayyidina Jibra'is salaam and that's it you're going to be lost. 
So you have to make your connection with the shaykh, that's the importance of the whole talk. That's why you have to get the meditation book. So the meditation book teaches you, you have to make your connection with the madad, you made your connection, then you go into understandings of the angels and the ask for inspirations and in the levels of the heart and understanding Sayyidina Jibreel and the level of the qalb. But this is with the madad of your shaykh being taught the knowledges of the angel. But to cut everyone out say, I'm now connecting with this angel, the angel is not in, interested at all in connecting with anyone because he doesn't break the adab of the tariqah either. So you have to remember like we said in a physical world that Allah is giving a command to Prophet, Prophet is telling the person, you follow this guide, that's it, that's the command. Now you think the angel will break the command of everyone and come whisper to you, hey how about you connect with me directly and broke the whole chain of command of everything that Prophet established. For what? Why would they do that? They have absolutely no interest in doing that. Because that's when your nafs thinks that you're so special that, no they will, they, they are coming to me. Why? Why would they want to do that? Because there's a chain of command. So their world is seen, we just don't see them. So in their seen world they're walking over to that person in the presence of Prophet and looking and saying, what are you doing now? This person has a guide, this guide will take them to where they have to go. So they don't want to do something to separate them from guidance and from the whole chain of guidance and, and open up the delusional world in which you can't see who's teaching you and you don't know what they're teaching you and you didn't establish your foundation of belief. When you follow the shaykh he's going to give you your foundation of belief. You look at him and say, look, look he has a beard. You're not going to see angel with beard. Then, oh look he has a siwak. You're not going to see angel come with siwak, he's not going to be following those, he's in the world of light. And then, oh look the shaykh when he washes, he washes like this and he prays these two rakahs, then he prays this uh, fard, then he prays this sunnah, then as he's talking he, he gives all of this. He's also teaching the student all the sharia, all of the, the Islamic issues, then the issues of iman, then the issues of maqam al ihsan but uh, when, when you cut all that out, the angels are not going to teach things like that. You won't even see those inside the angels or, or attributes of the angels. So no, it has to be through the physical to learn people's Islam, to have the perfection of their Islam. They accompany the shaykhs through the teaching so that to understand in Islamic issues, how do they function, how do they talk, how do they operate so that their Islam becomes solid their religious uh, aqidah is solid and that they follow Islamic law and jurisprudence so that they're not fasiq, they're not uh, hypocrites and they're not fake. Because the danger one is one whom says he's something and inside is very corrupt and you know does anything they want but outside they have this thing, so very dangerous. So you see a lot of these fasiq ones, I see, I'm seeing so many on TikTok, they look weird, they have weird hair, they, they look… men who look like women, they're doing all sorts of weird things, people coming up and trying to touch their feet and then babajis and all these things. It's not uh, anything to do with haqqaiqs. Naqshbandiyat and aliyah is a, a strong adherence to Islamic law and uh, their only miracle and the most powerful miracle is knowledge. So they have an immense ocean of spiritual knowledges at their disposal. And any other type of showmanship is not allowed. Where people make ho 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 like a carnival and you make the religion like a carnival then, then you're going to have a Prophet, you're going to have a, a difficulty with Prophet so they want it to be strong, they want it to be serious, they want it to be you know heavy duty. You're talking about the, the ki kingdom of Allah not a side circus in a barnyard somewhere. So it has to be very strong, inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, Regarding being of service, 
If we do service, but don't take pictures and send, is it okay? Sure, yeah. The part of taking pictures and sending, I mean if you do a large amount of service, please do take pictures so that we can motivate other people in other areas. And then this allows other people to say, oh look the group is doing, I'll go do in my area and then other people who can't do it say, okay I'll support uh, for people to do. So this is a part of the system that inspires people because competition is good in religion. But to take photos and say, okay, here I'm giving five dollars to everybody and put my face on it and, and trying to make my nafs proud, no. But this is a concept of feeding people and helping people to motivate because religion and competition in religion is good. Somebody sitting down saying, you know I can do that, I can go get some hamburgers, I can go make some sandwiches from the grocery store and give out food or I can go find some business that is throwing away food and pick it up and put it in, go give to the homeless. Because the guy's throwing away, he doesn't want to drive around to the shelters but he'll give you the food that he's throwing away and it's all good. So yeah, it, it, it excites people to be competitive and motivate people. So that's the purpose and, and the reality of, of trying to motivate people to participate and to be active inshaAllah. But if you want to do your service and not take pictures, no problem, alhamdulillah. It's between you and Allah So everyone knows if they have the ability to serve and are they serving and that's what's important. And if they don't do that at least you can take the articles and share them. Everyone should know how to share which I'm, I'm amazed that some people don't. You go to a website and there's a little box with an arrow. You choose one of the, like for Ramadan you go to the charity website choose the product Ramadan, you go to that page, you find the box with an arrow on it, you click and it says share. You say copy the link, go back into Facebook, paste the link with a little bit of a write-up on top. It's so easy, you, you share the, the fundraiser, you can share articles, you can share YouTubes, you can share everything. And that is again is a great khidmat because you now turn on the page and you see three, four hundred people all sharing. So then you get to blanket an area and everyone seeing our sharings that are going out, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum dear shaykh. Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Is using AI, can it harm us spiritually? Also a few days ago I advised a brother without consulting you first, sorry for my ignorance and bad adab. Yeah, everything can harm you, my, your microwave can harm you. So that's very generic, right? A hammer in your hand can harm you, especially if you don't hit the nail and you hit your finger. So everything gonna harm you, that's, that's a given. Now what's your intention? Can it help you? Of course it can help you. I can write letters to attorneys with AI. So it looks like I have my own legal division and I type in things. Like make me a contract based on this and these are the parties and it completely sends you a contract. And I send that to an attorney to read and they say, oh wow this is a nice contract <laughs> and they fix it. So <coughs> Allah gave a wisdom to everybody, right? So can you use things that Allah has made available with a hikmah, ilma laduni wa hikmati bi saliheen. Yeah of course. With that same hammer you can build a house or a masjid. So with everything you can find a good in it. But if you plan on taking the hammer and hitting yourself, no, you're gonna hurt, it's gonna hurt, don't do that. So yeah, if you use it for bad and a bad intention then it's not going to be good for people. So everything has a hikmah and a wisdom with the intention, qul'u amalun bin niyat. Every action Allah is going to be looking, what was the intention that you had that you got onto that? So when you enter onto these platforms, these are satanic playgrounds, don't play there. Don't make a profile with your name and your family picture and just make a profile under the Sufi meditation and pick the picture of the shaykh and post nice appropriate uh, articles from uh, your shaykh's site and that's it. But don't get into playgrounds of shaitan and start playing in there and chatting and direct messaging, completely forbidden. Don't make zina by talking to people that not within your 
identity, men to men, women to women. And even that you have to be careful because there are all these kids in Southeast Asia posing as women so that they can chat with women. So even that very dangerous. So you know they put a profile picture and pretend they're somebody and they're not that person. So all of that is just the devil's playground. So for us it's just take your articles, post them and put them all over social media and get out of there, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, I don't know so much Sharia rules because of this I confuse in some matters between right and wrong or it's according to Sharia or not. Should I learn Sharia? Yeah, you should email help me and you can get a book on Amazon Riyadh Salihin the, the, with the streams of paradise or it's Imam Shafi'i, it's a, like a cons, c condensed version for Imam Shafi'i. There's websites for Riyadh Salihin, Riyadh, how do you spell it, Riyadh, they're spelling it differently. R-I-Y-A-D, Riyadh Salihin. There's also a website with the entire Riyadh Salihin on the website for free. So all you have to do is ask help me and then we'll send you which websites to go. Yahya can make an article on, on uh, following Sharia and then we just say, follow to Riyadh Salihin, this is the website. And everything on that website is based on sections very nicely laid out. We're going to add it to our app, Haji Shahid is going to add it. So when you say zikr in Islam you click and it'll give you all the hadith that are related to zikr in Islam. Oh, beautiful. Going and visiting the dead then click it gives you all the hadith of how they went to the graves and prayed for their loved ones. Then you understand the sharia to the degree that you need to unless you're planning on being a judge and you have to actually take courses. If you're not going to be a judge and, and give verdicts and rulings then you need to know the guidelines as far as not to step out of Islamic law. Then anything that difficult you should have emailed already, saying, I'm about to do something very dangerous and I'm going to take me out of Islamic law then you email, it's very common sense. But every day are you going to fall in and out of Islam? In most subjects no. But if you're deciding on if you're going to have pork chops and, and drink some alcohol then yes you email help me and we'll tell you, no, no you're way outside of Islamic law, don't even go there. But everything else you can get the basics from these websites. So and all of our teachings keeps you within that understanding. So most of the teachings it, it completely puts you within and the app, what prayers to make, what recitations to make within those prayers. All of it's within the app, the du'as are all in the app, so alhamdulillah all of that is, is, is all within that program. Anyone coming new to Islam and they want to take their shahada, it's very simple, ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu and then start watching our videos and then help me at Nur Muhammad, it's very simple. And then we'll send an introduction email that introducing you to the tariqah and follow along slowly. That's it. We're not like other people where, oh, you know, accepted Islam, now you gotta do this, 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 and here I'm gonna put this on your head, and then you gotta do this. And no, it's not that way. We have hundreds coming through Islam every month through this channel. So it's not one person, it's hundreds come every month that are clicking and saying, I just turned on to it, I just got the YouTube, I just came in, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. So make it very easy, take your shahada and email helpme at nurmuhammad.com, that's it, that's all you have to do. And then in that email will come on how to begin to establish your Islamic belief and practices slowly, slowly, inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa of a Siri Surat al-Fatiha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, 
Our water well give the gift of life. Our mobile food vans, we have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.